hello and welcome to a new series of videos on a tutorial for Putty GP. Now, if you are new to the Putty GP software, I recommend that you watch an introductory video that I'm going to put in the in a link in the video description and also in the upper right corner. And if you decide to install the software, I also have a couple of videos where you can watch how to install it in Windows 10, Linux, and also Mac OS. Okay, so let's get started with the tutorial. So this is a basic, so we're going to talk about really basic uh, features of this uh, party software. Okay, one of the things, the first thing I want to show you is if you are, if you want to put this in full screen mode, there is, there is one, a couple of commands or one command that you can use to do that. Now, if you are in Windows, if you press Alt Enter, you're going to go into full screen mode. So like that. And to get out of the full screen, you actually do the same. Alt Enter and you come out of full screen. Now in Linux is F11. So if you do the same thing, so here I'm in Windows, I'm actually pressing F11 to toggle full screen. And for Mac OS is Command Control F will have the same effect in case you want to do this in, in full screen. Now, another thing I want to show you is once you have put some commands in Paddy GP here, if you look down there in the uh, in the blinking uh, uh, bar, if you go with the arrows up and down, it will show you the list of the history of the commands that you have put in Paddy GP. Now, sometimes this is convenient because sometimes you type something and you just want to modify a little bit. So you go through the history and just click in there and then modify whatever you want to modify there. So the history is with upper, let's go up and down with the arrows. Now another neat feature of Party GP is you can also auto complete. So for example, let's say we want to try to type is prime. And then if we tap on the tab key, they will act auto complete for you. Now, if the um, if the command that you have that you are looking for you don't know exactly the whole words but you want to say for example what are all the commands that start with PR you double click on tab and it will show you the list of all the commands that start with PR now that is of course functions with anything that you can think of, for example, if there is something that I start with is double tap will show me all the commands that you can use for uh, in this software, starting with the word is. So a random complete is also like that. Now, one more thing that we let's let's look at this is let's say, for example, you want to quit the software. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can do uh, a slash Q and that will quit the program or also quit. So both of them will actually quit the software. So if you are in Windows, it will probably just close the window completely. But if you are in Linux or in Mac OS, it will just get you out of the software and put you in the terminal mode. Now, another thing I want to mention is when you're computing something and you want to stop it because it's taken a, a long time, there is a command a couple of commands you can use is called Control C. Control C will stop the evaluation. So if there's something that you takes a long time and you don't want to wait for it, for example, factor. So this is going to factor the number, let's say, uh, 10 times factorial plus two. Now this is a really big number. So if I if I press Enter here to factor it, that's going to take a really long time. So if you don't want to wait for it, so Control C will stop the the computation. Now in this case, it goes into break. So just type break again to come back to the normal uh, input for Party GP. So this is a couple of things, some a few things that you can do to make your life a little bit easier when you're managing the software. Okay, let me clear the screen. So you can use Party GP. As, an, as a calculator, so it's a regular calculator. So you can do all the operation that you can imagine in the calculator. For example, you can do addition, so it's eight. 
um, we multiplication of course you can multiply numbers and you of course get the answer there uh, let's do a fraction for example 2 over 14 and look at what happens there it gives me 1 over 7 so whenever possible party GP will try to give you an exact answer and let's say that's not what you want you want actually want the decimal representation of that fraction so it's a couple of things you can do you can for example say 1 dot divided by 7 that will give you the decimal representation of that number or you can also do it like this so I'm gonna use the arrow key here up to go to my history because I don't want to type all that again and I'm gonna say 1 over 7 point or 7 dot and that's gonna give me exactly the same thing so that's the um, the decimal representation as you can see this, this decimal representation gives you probably a lot more than the regular calculator will give you now the default is usually 32 significant digits for most systems or 28 in other systems if you want to know how many significant digits you have in the calculator you type slash p and it will give you the number of significant digits that are in your software by default so for me is 38 significant digits now you can also change that you can tell party gp to uh, to make you uh, to give you a little bit more significant digits let's say for example we want 200 significant digits so you still type slash p and the number of significant digits that you want so 200 without space or anything so you just type that and then now I have 200 significant digits. Let's test this. Let's say we want to find the value of pi. So capital P i, that's a constant in Pi GP, which you give me the number pi, and that's gonna be 200 in 11 significant digits of the number pi. Now you can also do this for for other numbers. For example, e. Now e, you can type it in Pi GP as the exponential of 1 so that would be the number e and that will give me 200 significant digits now let, let's say that that's too much so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back to the default which is 38 significant digits so i type a slash p and 38 to come back to the um sin the 38 significant digits which is the default for me now i'm going to clear the window here so List. So remember, now we are in 38 significant digits. So let's say we want to uh, look at this expression, exponential of 100. That will give me e to the 100. And so let's see what happens when you put it there. If you look at that computation right there, you see that it's in exponential form. So it's not an exact form. It's giving me 2.6 and all of this. And this is e43 that's 10 to the 43 so this is an approximation and the reason that happened is because we are in 38 significant digits if we really want to see uh, what that is so let, let's actually change the precision to uh, 50 and let's type again using the arrow keys to go to the history let's do that and that's a little bit better so now we can see uh, a little bit of a better expression for for that exponential now let me come back again to the 38 significant digits um, you can also do uh, complex numbers and the I the imaginary unit is capital I now one thing that you can do in PariGP to ask for some uh, help is if you put a question mark and then the name of your function or the name of your constant it will give you a little bit of an explanation of what that is so in this case it's saying that that's the square root of negative one which is the imaginary unit so you can also do computations with complex numbers let's try for example something like a 4 plus 3i and let's raise this with a caret symbol to square now what's going to happen here is i'm going to get an error and the syntax error that it says there, um, unexpected variable name, expecting parentheses, basically the error here is because between the number 3 and the i is expecting a multiplication sign. So I'm going to go again using the 
up arrow key to go to my history and I'm gonna just type uh, multiplication so it understand is not a 3i is not a variable alone but it's actually three times the number i so if you do that then the computation will go ahead and simplify and that would be 3 plus 4i all squared now one of the things we have seen here is that we sometimes get errors and you can you should get used to it because you will eventually make some errors everybody does that's not a problem you just learn from it so if you type 1 divided by 0, of course that's going to be an error. So it's impossible to, to divide by 0, basically that's what it is. And it goes into a break. Now when it goes into a break here, uh, basically what it's saying is, so um, this is a debug kind of thing for party GP. If you want to get out of it, just say break and come back to the, actually the, the normal mode of party GP. Let me clear this key again. And then let's say you can do lots of computations, of course, here as a calculator. Let's say you want 20 factorial, and that's 20 factorial right there. Now, I don't know if you have noticed this, but every time I do a computation, there is a percentage 11 that comes out here. That is keeping track of the outputs of every single computation we have done here. Now, you can refer to this computation by that number. So if you just type percentage sign, it's going to give me the result of the last computation, which is the 20 factorial. I can compute with this. So for example, I can say that computation, the last computation, which in this case will be this one, number 12 here. And I say minus 2, and that should give me that 20 factorial minus 2. Now, if you want to revert to a particular computation, you can ask, for example, what was the computation, let's say, 5 or 3, and that would be 1 over 7. So it keeps track, it keeps a history of the the outputs of the computations that you have done. Now, you can also do, of course, all, all sorts of, of functions that the calculator also has. So it has a square root, it has exponential, as we saw, all the trigonometric functions, logs, exponentials, uh, uh, arc signs, cosine, and all of those functions. So you can take all the square root SQRT, uh, the R goes there, of, uh, for example, 2, and that's going to give me the square root of 2. Now, I'll get, remember, if you want to increase the number of decimals there, you just put a slash P and then the number of decimals you want for that. So you also have the function sine, cosine, and all of that. So sine of, for example, uh, 30, that's going to give me that number. Now, in this case, you have to be careful because it all, it, all of this is in radians. So that's 30 radians, not 30 degrees. If you want sine, for example, of a pi divided by 2, which will give me a uh, sine of 90 degrees, that's going to be 1. Uh, you probably don't need that many decimals in that case, but that's fine. All right, so you can also do arc sine arc tangent and that is with a this arc sine of let's say for example uh, 0 0.5 so that would be the arc sine of 0 0.5 which is that number now if you remember from your calculus classes arc sine is the real arc sine is defined for numbers between negative 1 and 1 but arc sine for party GP works also with complex numbers. So we can actually see, uh, let's ask for help here, arc sine. And this is the arc sine of that. And if you want more help, so if you want extra information about the function you're trying to use, you type double uh, question mark in the name of the function. So in this case is arc sine. And it's going to bring up in my case, it's going to bring up a PDF thing, which you cannot see well here. But if you're using Windows, it's going to give you a little bit more visible thing. So here I cannot see it very well, but it will give you a little bit more help with that. All right. So on the, t on the, t on the topic of help using the question mark, I'm going to erase this here. Now, if you just type question mark, and this is one of the things that you probably want to use a lot, is because you probably won't be able to memorize the tons of functions that are in PyTGP, is you can ask 
uh, help here and it's gonna give you a list of topics you can uh, see for help so for example help topics for list of subtopics type uh, the question mark and end so what that's saying is these are all the available topics and if you want to if you want to look at one of them in particular for example in this case we are interested let's say in number theoretical functions what we do is we type the question mark and five and that will bring up all the number theoretical functions that are available for us this is a big list here um, so let's say you're curious about one of those functions um, uh, any function will do let's say for example uh, let's choose one let's say this one GCD which is the greatest common divisor so we just type question mark GCD and it'll tell us what it is so the GCD is the greatest common divisor between X and Y so this is a great way for you to remember to look up things of course the purpose of using always software is to uh, know what functions you have so you don't have to build them again so if you're looking for something uh, just do this before you implement that function itself because it's much better like that so you can you, if you're good you can uh, look at let's say for example let's look at another one prime and a prime and returns the end prime so you can check a little bit let's say prime of uh, so this is going to give me the hundred prime that's 141 so you can play with this uh, so this remember this is just a basic uh, introduction to party gp and we will see more a little bit later now the last thing i want to do is let's look at plots now party gp is not great with plots uh, but but it has a lot of functions with plots so let's say we want to do a really rough plot so let's just start with plot and the first thing you're going to do is give it the range so the the values of x so let's say x is going to go from minus 10 uh, to 10 and let's say we want to plot the function x times sine of x now don't forget to put the multiplication sign there because it might give you an error so let's press enter here now this is going to give you an ascii uh, graph of the function x sine of x the line that you see right here in the middle does the x axis and i actually like it but but this is not the standard um way in which you usually see plots of functions now you can change that a little bit plot is a rough graph of whatever function you're trying to plot you can do a little bit better if i use my arrow key to go uh, to my history there is another function called plot h and that plot h is going to be a little bit better than this one so if i press enter here it's going to bring up the graph of x sine of x between negative 10 and 10. Um, of course that body gp has more graphing capabilities i personally don't like it that much for graph but if this is good for you then then great um i'm gonna close this um so that's basically um the the introduction to party gp this is just a basic idea on how party gp works in the next video we'll be talking about more specific functions for number theory all right so that's all i have to say for today thank you for watching take care and good luck